Today we examine the TCP header in great detail. So first let's look at the location of TCP in the TCP IP stack. So we notice that it is in the transport layer, which is layer 4. Note that the transport layer contains UDP and TCP. So whenever TCP IP is functioning, you're going to either use UDP or TCP, but not both. Note that TCP is much more complex because it is connection oriented as opposed to UDP, which is not. So let's examine the fields in detail. So we start with the source port, which is the port number used by the application program or process running on the source host. A slight oversimplification would be to say that the IP address says what host to go to, and then the port says where on that host to go. If the source host is a server, then the number will be a well-known port, which is from 0 to 1023 and defined by IANA, that's I-A-N-A. The same application will always use the same port. For example, Telnet will always use port 23. If the source host is a client, then the port will be an, what we call an ephemeral port, meaning it will be chosen at random by the client and will be greater than 1023. Next, we look at the destination port field. Now, that's the same concept as the source port already described in detail, except, of course, it refers to the destination. And next, we look at the sequence number field. Now, to make TCP reliable, the bytes are numbered. The receiver looks at the sequence number so that it can see if all packets arrived and puts them in the correct order, even if they arrive out of order. As more and more packets are sent, the sender increments the sequence number in each packet by the number of data bytes in the previous packet. Next, we look at the acknowledgement number field. Now here the receiver acknowledges the receipt of all data bytes it has received so far. Specifically, it is the byte number, that is the sequence number, that the receiver is expecting to see from the sender. So I'll give you an example. A client sends a server a packet with a sequence number of 10,001. The packet contains 291 bytes of data. The server then replies to the client with an ACK of 10,292. Why? Because 10,000 plus 291 plus 1 equals 10,292. Next, we look at the header length field which is also called data offset. Now that indicates the length of the TCP header. But just to make things interesting, it indicates it as the number of four byte words in the header. Now most commonly, the header is 20 bytes long, which is also the minimum that, that it can be. In this case, the value of the field would be five. Why? because 4 times 5, or 5 times 4, equals 20. Next, we have a reserved field. So we'll see what they put in that in the future. Next, we go to the flags. Now, you notice that there are six flags. So the first is the ERG flag, U-R-G flag. So if that's set to 1, that tells the receiver to look at the urgent pointer field. Next is the ACK flag. Now, if that's set to 1, it tells the receiver to look at the acknowledgement field number. Now, that seems kind of redundant, as all packets after uh, the initial uh, SYN packet have an ACK set to 1, as there is always data in the acknowledgement field number after that initial SYN packet. Next, we go to the 
push flag. Now, when TCP receives data, it normally buffers that data. Then, in its own sweet time, it will deliver the data to the application program above. There is no specific requirement as to when the buffered data must be delivered to the application. But if the sender wants the data in the packet to be delivered immediately to the receiver's application, then it sets the push flag. This tells the receiver, don't wait for any more data, just deliver the data in the packet to the application now. Next, we look at the reset flag. Now, this is, t this is TCP's way of telling a remote host, don't go away mad, just go away. Remember, before two hosts can communicate using TCP, a connection must be created first. That's, of course, the three-way handshake, the famous three-way handshake. TCP uses the reset flag to refuse to, f to form a connection with a remote host or to abort an already existing connection. Next, we look at the send flag. Before two hosts can communicate using TCP, a connection must first be created using the three-way handshake, which is SYN, SYNAC, ACK. A local host wishing to connect to a remote host will send a packet with the SYN flag and the sequence number field will contain a random initial sequence number. Note that no other flags will be set. And the last flag is the fin flag. Now that's kind of like a reset, but more polite. So example, host A and host B have established a connection and they've been exchanging traffic for a while. They run out of stuff to talk about. So host A decides to close the connection. Host A sends a fin to host B and then host B returns with an ACK. Then host B sends a fin to host A then host B returns with an ACK. The party's over. Window size. What makes TCP reliable? ACKS. A-C-K-S. It works like this. Host A sends some sort of data to host B, and host B sends, sends an ACK that it received the data. Host A expects to see the ACK. If it never received it, it assumes that the data has been lost and, resemp and resends it. Simple concept, right? Now, where does the window size come in? It defines how much data can host, a, uh, host A can send before receiving the ACK from host B. Next, we look at the checksum field. Before a data packet is sent, TCP runs both its header and data through a specific algorithm to arrive at the checksum value. And this is placed in the checksum field. When the receiver gets the, the packet, it runs it through the same algorithm. If the data it gets matches, it accepts the packet. If not, it drops the packet. Next, let's talk about the urgent pointer field. Now, as the application streams data to TCP, there may be a number of bytes in the stream that the application wants the remote host application to handle in some special way. So, the sending TCP creates a segment and puts the urgent data in the beginning of the field, followed by the normal data. The urgent pointer, that flag, indicates the end of the urgent data, the end of the urgent data, so the receiving host can identify it. So let's look at options and padding. Uh, the name is the recipe here. So options are optional stuff that TCP can do if the option is specified in this field. That is the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching.